now we are going to discuss a new topic capillary rise we know that water rises up in a narrow tube in spite of gravity the word capilla means hair that is if the tube is very thin like our hair the rise would be very large it means that in the picture consider the picture the picture consists of a beaker containing some liquid and a narrow capillary tube is inserted into it the second picture shows the enlarged picture near the interface we can see that consider this is a curved surface this is a curved surface and that is it is a part of a circle circle having radius r here r is the radius of the curved surface the curved surface of water and here a the small a is the radius of capillary tube the radius of capillary tube now we are going to discuss what is capillary rise and the consequences behind that that is to see uh, to see this consider a vertical capillary tube of circular cross section inserted into an open vessel of water the angle of contact between water and glass is acute here theta is the angle of contact it is acute angle theta is the angle of contact theta is the angle of contact and in this case it is acute that is it wet the tube the water wet the tube thus the surface of the water in the capillary is concave in shape the surface is concave in shape that is we can see that in the figure it is like this it is a concave in shape this means that there is a pressure difference between the two side of the top surfaces it is given by if pi is the pressure inside this circle or in this region and p0 is the pressure inside the liquid then we can say that the pressure difference pi minus p0 can be written as 2s by r this equation is derived in the previous section and we have to rewritten the radius r in terms of the radius of capillary tube for this consider the triangle here from this also this angle is theta here from this we can say that cos theta the cos theta is the adjacent side by hypotenuse what is the adjacent side a what is hypotenuse r that is cos theta is equal to a by r now r is equal to a by cos theta and substituting this here we get 2s by a cos theta that is this is the pressure difference in this region that is the outside pressure is somewhat in greater than the inside pressure that is pi is greater than p0 this is the equation number 1 and thus the pressure of the water inside the tube just at the meniscus is less than the atmospheric pressure then consider the two point a and b in the figure a they they must be at the same pressure 
that is the, the point A is here and point B is here. Since we know that PA, the pressure at A will be equal to pressure at B. That is because of it is at the same level, the pressure must be equal. So, from the earlier classes we studied the pressure at A, that is P0, it is the pressure inside the tube plus H rho G is the, it is the pressure due to the liquid column where rho H is the height of the where H is the height of the column, liquid column and G is the gravitational constant, gravitational constant and rho is the density of the fluid and this will be equal to the pressure PA and it will be equal to the pressure outside that is PA. A is the outside pressure. Here it is PI. Here also it is PI. That is outside pressure is PI which is equal to the pressure PI. Now from this equation we can write as PI minus P0 which is equal to H rho G that is equation number 2. From equation 1 and 2, we can write thus H rho G is equal to 2S cos theta divided by A. From this, H is equal to 2S cos theta divided by rho G. It is the height of the capillary rise, that is height or uh, the liquid rises in the capillary tube is depend on that is the height of the liquid depends on the surface tension that is it is directly proportional to surface tension that is capillary rise that is capillary rise is due to the phenomena surface tension is due to the phenomena surface tension. For example, we are having a tube, capillary tube having radius A, that is A is equal to 0 0.05 centimeter and we are having a surface tension 0 0.073 newton per meter that is the surface tension of water then rho is the density of liquid going to substitute this in the equation 2s by rho g a here we take theta as 0 that is cos theta is equal to 1 that is substituting this that is 2 into 0 0.073 divided by 10 raised to 3 into 9.8 into 5 into 10 raised to minus 4 and this will yield the equation 2.98 centimeter that is the water having the surface tension 0 0.073 newton per meter and a tube having radius 0 0.05 cm has a rise of 2.98 cm. That is, if the liquid meniscus is convex as for mercury, that is, if post theta is negative, then it is clear that the liquid will be in lower in the capillary. This is the case of positive, that is, here H is a positive quantity. For mercury, theta is obtuse. Theta is obtuse. That is, it is negative quantity. That is, the, the liquid surface will have a lower depression. That is, mercury will not rise to the highest. That is, the liquid will be lower in the capillary. That is the capillary rice.
Now we are going to discuss another topic that is detergents and surface tension. We know that the fluid is characterized by a property called surface tension. That is, the surface of the liquid is act like an stretched membrane. Because of this, it is it is having advantages and disadvantages. One of the disadvantages of surface tension is that it will not wet the clothes or surface having tiny holes in it. Because of the surface tension, the water will not go deep into the fabric and wet the wax or oil attached to the fabric. So, we use detergents. We use detergents to reduce the surface tension of water. Thereby, the water go deep into the tiny holes of fabric and it will wet the grease or wax contained in that area. That is, this process requires some of the energy requirements that will be studied later. That is, consider this is the soap molecule. Consider the soap molecules. The soap molecule is characterized by a special shape that it is, has a tail end and is a head end. The tail end is attached to the oil part or wax part or the dirt part and the head is attached to the water part that is it is the what head is the water loving area and tail is the oil loving part okay that is in the figure when we add soap molecules to the water the surface area or the surface of the water is contained by the soap molecules that is it is literally reduces the surface tension of the water and the head portion is down to the that is it is attracted to the water molecule this is when we dissolve soap molecules in the water then in the this is the first picture in the second picture we are having a surface this is a surface it is having a dirt there is greasy dirt. This is, these dirt particles are grease. Then we have to remove it, uh, the grease. Then in the next picture we are adding simply water. When simply water is added, that is the water will not stick to the grease part because water is having a high surface tension. And when the detergent is added, the inert waxy end, we know that the tail end is the waxy end, the waxy end of the molecule is attracted to the boundary where water meets dirt, that is the literally the water didn't wet the wax, but the, the end, the, the, this is the water, this is the, and this is the grease, the soap molecule is the mediator which connects water to the grease. That is why the water wet the grease. Now the grease part is surrounded by the soap molecules. Thereby it is detaches. That is it is like this. This is the fourth picture. This is the fifth picture. In the fifth picture, we are having the inert end, that is the oil end, the waxy end, surround the dirt and platter dirt can now be dislocated by, say, moving water. That is, this, this end is containing water and this, this end, end is containing grease. That is, in the next picture, we are having the grease part is detached from the surface by the detergent molecules. That is the tail end is attracted to the oil part and the head end is attracted to the water. These are the water. Okay. <clears throat> that is the dirt is suspend, held suspended surrounded by soap molecule. This, this is the mechanism of dislogging or detaching dirt from the clothes. That is, detergents reduces surface tension. We are going to discuss some of the problems in the chapter Mechanical Properties of Fluids given is a question from the topic Terminal Velocity that is from the portion Viscosity. Here it is given that 
terminal velocity of a copper ball falling through a tank of oil at 20 degrees Celsius is 6.5 cm per second. Also, radius of the copper ball is about 2 mm. That is, this, there is a tank and it is filled with the oil and we are putting a copper ball of radius 2 millimeter in that and after some time it attains a terminal velocity of 6.5 centimeter per second. Now we have to find the viscosity of the coefficient of viscosity of the oil and we have an equation that is 2a square rho minus sigma g divided by 9 pt. Here vt is the terminal velocity a is the radius of the copper ball. Rho and sigma are the density of oil and density of copper respectively. G is the gravitational constant. Okay. Now, we are substituting this 2 into A square. Since it is in millimeter, we have to multiply it with 10 raised to minus 3. The whole square and rho. What is rho? Rho is the density of oil, uh, density of copper. 8.9 into 10 raised to minus 3 minus 1.5 into 10 raised to 3. This is the density of oil into 9.8 and divided by 9 into Vt. Vt is the terminal velocity and it is in the centimeter. We have to multiply by it by 10 raised to minus 2. That is on solving this we get the equation uh, so we get the answer 10 raised to minus 11 kilogram per meter second. That is option D is the answer. Moving on to the next question. It is about a raindrop of radius 0.3 millimeter has a terminal velocity in the air, it is 1 meter per second, viscosity of air is given, we have to find the viscous force on the raindrop, that is we are having raindrops, it is falling through the air and the radius of the raindrop is about 0.3 millimeter and it is having a terminal velocity that is terminal velocity Vt is equal to 1 meter per second and viscosity of air is about 18 into 10 raised to minus 5 poise and we have to find the viscous force. The viscous force F is equal to 6 pi eta AV. This is the Stokes formula. It is the Stokes formula and it is equal to 6 into 3.14 into 18 into 10 raised to minus 6. When poise is converted into SI unit, we have to use a, an additional 10 that is 10 raised to minus 6 into 0.3 into 10 raised to minus 3 equal to 1.018 into 10 raised to minus 7 Newton. Answer B is the right answer. The next question is about a water is flowing through a horizontal pipe 8 centimeter in diameter and 4 kilometer in length at a rate of 20 liter per second. Assuming only viscous resistance, the pressure required to maintain the flow in terms of mercury column. That is the question is about, that is we are having a horizontal tube of length 4 km and it is having centimeter, 8 centimeter diameter, it is having diameter 8 centimeter. And the fluid is flu uh, flowing per 20 liter per second. And we have to find the pressure required to 
maintain the flow in terms of mercury column that is we have the equation of pressure p is equal to a v eta l by pi r raised to 4 here it is given that the ray, diameter that is 2 r is equal to 8 cm which is equal to 0.08 meter and so r is equal to half of that that is 0.04 meter and the length is given that is 4 km in meter it is 400000 meter and volume that is rate of volume that is 20 liter per second which is equal to 20 into 10 raised to minus 3 meter cube per second and also eta is given by 0.01 pascal second and substituting these values that is equal to 8 into 20 into 10 raised to minus 3 into 0.001 into 4000 meter divided by pi 3. 14 into 0.04 the whole raised to 4 and uh, that is we get 7.954 into 10 raised to 4 pascal the question is about we have to convert it into mercury column and for that we have an equation of height mercury height of the mercury column is given by p divided by rho g here we have the p that is pressure 7.954 into 10 raised to 4 divided by the density of the fluid that is 13.6 uh, into 10 raised to 3 into 9.8 On, on calculating this, we get 59.68 centimeter. That is, the option B is the right answer. The next question is: In a car lift, compressed air exerts a force F1 on a small piston having a radius of 5 centimeter. This pressure is transmitted to the second piston of a radius 15 cm. If the mass of the car to be lifted is 1350 kg, then the pressure necessary to accomplish this task is that is we are having a car lift that is it is we are having a small area portion and a large area portion. of something like this and we are exerting a pressure f1 on this small area that is the radius is about 5 cm and it is having a force f2 at the second surface and it is having a radius of 15 cm and it is given the mass of the car is that is mass of the car is 1350 kg and we have to find the force exerted that is f1 we have to calculate the f1 and the pressure necessary to accomplish the task that is to lift the car how much pressure is applied on the first area and it is given R1 is equal to 5 cm that is equal to 5 into 10 raised to minus 2 meter and R2 is equal to 15 cm that is equal to 15 into 10 raised to minus 2 meter and from the pascal's law F1 by F2 is equal to A1 by A2 A1 by A2 are the areas. That is, we have to find the F1. That is, A1 F2 divided by A2 
which in it is having a circular cross section that is the area is given by pi r1 square f2 divided by pi r2 square cancelling the pi and substituting for the radius that is here the r1 that is here the small r1 and the small r2 that is pi into 10 raised to minus 2 the whole square uh, divided by 15 into 10 raised to minus 2 the whole square and also we are having F2 is equal to the weight of the car that is mg that is m is 9.8 that is we are having the, uh, the solution 1.5 into 10 raised to 3 Newton which is the force F1 and we are having we are going to find the pressure that is F1 by A1 which is equal to 1.5 into 10 raised to 3 Newton divided by pi 5 into 10 raised to minus 2 the whole square which is equal to 1.9 into 10 raised to 5 Pascal that is option A is the right answer. The next question is the lower end of a capillary tube is dipped into water and it is seen that water rises through 7.5 cm in capillary given surface tension of water is 7.5 into 10 raised to minus 2 newton per meter and angle of contact between water and capillary tube is 0 what will be the diameter of the capillary tube that is we are having a beaker or a vessel and it is filled with the water and we are dipping a small capillary tube here and it is having a rise of 7.5 centimeter capillary and we have to find the radius of the capillary tube that is it is given that the capillary rise h is equal to 7.5 centimeter which is equal to 7.5 into 10 raised to minus 2 meter and surface tension of water is equal to 7.5 into 10 raised to minus 2 newton per meter and angle of contact is given that theta is equal to 0 we have to find the uh, diameter of the capillary tube then that is we have the equation of capillary rise h is equal to 2s cos theta divided by r rho g and that is we are we have to find the r that is r is equal to 2s cos theta divided by h rho g so we, the diameter is 2r so we have to multiply this by 2 that is 4 into 7.5 into 10 raised to minus 2 into cos 0 divided by 7.5 into 10 raised to minus 2 into 10 raised to 3 into 10 which is equal to 4 into 10 raised to minus 4 is equal to 0 0.4 millimeter that is option C is the answer. The next question is a fluid is flowing through a horizontal pipe of varying cross section with the speed v meter per second at a point where the pressure is p pascal at another point where gauge pressure is p by 2 pascal its speed is capital v meter per second and also density is given we have to find the final velocity that is v then uh, this it is having we are having a horizontal pipe of varying cross section that is here it is like this and 
at the first phase it is traveling with small velocity and and p v small v and small p are the velocity and the pressure here and it is having a velocity capital v and p by 2 are the pressure here we are having the bernoulli's equation the bernoulli's equation that is p1 plus rho g h1 plus half rho v1 square is equal to rho 2 plus p2 p2 plus rho g h2 plus half rho v2 square since it is having a same level we are cancelling the potential energy due to height difference since it is h1 is equal to h2 the height is same and since we are having the equation p1 plus half rho v1 square is equal to p2 plus half rho v2 square and we are substituting for the equation that is p p1 should be p and half rho v square is equal to p by 2 plus half rho v square and p minus p by 2 is equal to half rho v square minus v square that is v square is equal to p by rho plus v square and v is equal to root of p divided by rho plus v square that is solution d is the right answer